let's share with you guys some ideas to break free from small thinking. I, what do you think small thinking is? I think small thinking is not, is thinking inside of a box, probably like right? not being able to think beyond a certain level of like, whether it's your income or your lifestyle, mm -hmm. maybe not being able to think beyond your circumstances. I feel like everyone here, all of you are entrepreneurs. So all of you don't think small about your lifestyle. You always, you're, you're achieve, you're trying to achieve more, mm -hmm. but I think that even in entrepreneurship, we can have small thinking. I think that what we do <clears throat> with small thinking too, is that we, we tend to think about everything through this lens of what we think we are capable of achieving and accomplishing. Uh, and we, we're, no one is ever like, um, you know, we don't, we're not our best, our own best cheerleaders in life. Generally, generally what we do is we tend to minimize our abilities and think that we're true really just not, you know, we don't, we're not going to cut it. Right. And so then we, we <clears throat> view things from that perspective or we view them from the how, and like, well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to figure that out? How am I going to? And we always think about like it all being weighed on our shoulders of what we personally have to accomplish or do. And so I think that keeps us also in a mindset of small thinking. Let's talk yeah. about breaking free from small thinking today, a romance travel professional's guide to achieving big goals. So here's my thought. Small thinking equals small results. So we wanted to come on today and give you three game-changing tips to help you overcome the limitations of small thinking. So tip number one is to dream big and plan bigger. So we have to embrace the power of dreaming big and envisioning the, the success that you desire. You know how when you have those, those cheesy commercials, which we all love to like imitate when, you know, they're like, you get this, you know, this box of nice, but wait, there's more. Oh, infomercials. Wait, there yes. Infomercials. There's more. There's like more. But I think that we have to like have a mindset of that when we are approaching things, when it comes to our goals, when it comes to what we're setting our sights on and have that like, but wait, there's more. Like there could be more. Like we are capping ourselves and putting limits because we're, again, like I said, looking at everything through this lens of ourselves. But here's a, just a tip here. Break, we want to break down those grand visions into actionable steps and set smart yeah. goals. So here's just like a actionable, realistic reminder. Many of us have heard about smart goals, right? Um, but we need to um, always put everything in that perspective. Because uh, basically, when for me personally, yeah. when I have like a big goal, and like, I'm going for it with something, um, you know, like when we launched our 20K system and toolkit, that was like a big, like we're creating something that didn't exist. Like that was like hard to wrap my brain around, right? right? Or even when we launched our academy, our goal is to be, to have this be a travel school, but it has to be full time. And there's different things that we have to do in order for that. So this is like this big goal that I have. Right. But I have to like break it down in between. So sometimes what we have to do is we have to have like our big main goal and then we have to have um, small goals or stepping stones within that. So you always want to start big and then you work your way backwards on the things that you want to achieve in between. But a smart goal as a reminder is specific. It's measurable. It's achievable. It's relevant and it's time bound. OK, nice. so we want to be as specific as possible with our goals. We want to make sure that we can actually measure it. We want it so that so it is something that we can a achieve. Right. It's achievable. You so, want it to be relevant. So relevant is one of those things where I think a lot of us miss out on that. We tend to forget about when it comes to the smart goals. So what is relevant when it comes to our goals? is really taking a step back and thinking about why. Why am I doing this? What is my big overall vision? I think when it comes to our lives spiritually, when it comes to our lives physically, relationally, um, you know, when it comes and in business, we always have to have that foundational understanding of why we are doing what we're doing. So that if we set a goal, it matches that goal that we're setting matches the why that we're doing. Does that make sense? We don't want to oh, step outside our bounds because that's when it feels so like we're striving and we're like working so hard and we're grinding day in and day out. Like it shouldn't feel that way, right? It should be like a momentum. It should be an excitement because you're 
underlying reason of why you want to do this thing is like fueling you. Does that make sense? So if you ever feel like I'm not saying that goals are always just going to be a cakewalk um, because we th they are going to be something that's going to stretch us. Right. They're going to stretch us physically. They're going to stretch, stretch us emotionally, um, spiritually, whatever they might do. I want to break this. So, for example, Karen, I hope you don't care. I'm going to use you as an example just because you're always a game team player and you're awesome in general. But so specific, let's say Karen Rose, who has an amazing desk. She's an amazing destination wedding designer. She said, you know what? I want a goal this year. I want to bring my, I want to, I want to have $500,000 of disposable income through my business, you know, after all of my, so that would be a specific goal, mm -hmm. $500,000, but then it needs to be measurable. Mm -hmm. Right. So now, um, Karen needs a way that she's going to be able to measure. How am I going to measure? Right. That How this many? Is going to happen? So in other words, that would be kind of like breaking it down. Okay. If I had a goal, right. let's just say your goal was a $500,000 in sales period. Like that's just like your sales volume, not your commission. Sure. Volume. I guess. Yeah. That's but your idea. sales volume. Then you need to be able to measure mm -hmm. like how many people do I need to work with in order to achieve that? And then it has to be achievable. Like I said, it can't right. be this uh, unrealistic <clears throat> timeline. So right. if it's not something, so maybe you have to adjust your timeline of it. Maybe you have to adjust the amount depending on how much time you have for it, whatever, but it does need to be achievable. Right. It should stretch you. It should push you. Um, because like Lou always says, if you don't even try to go for gold, you're not even going to get right. like silver oh, sure. or bronze. Right. Here's the other thing is just because at first, if you think it's not achievable, don't let that stop you. Think about break it down. So then the next thing was relevant, which I, this was where I was like, it has to align with your values. It has to align with your why. And again, yeah. when we're doing goals, you know, they are going to push us. They are going to stretch us. They are going to keep us focused on what we're trying to do, but they should be fueled by our why and who we are and what matters to us in life. It has to be time bound. We've got to put a time right. limit on things. Otherwise they're just there. And that's the same thing every year. So putting a time limit on things. And, and one of the things that Lou and I do is we um, will tell other people so that they hold us accountable. Like if you have a community right. of people who are, are like-minded, you, you're part of this community and you can share with them, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Like you want to keep it because once you start telling other people, then you will hold yourself even more accountable to achieving it on that timeline. So every successful journey begins with a single step. Okay. Right. We don't have to know every single step in between. It's okay to not know every single step. Right. That's what faith is, right? Stepping out into the unknown. All right. Second thing is surround yourself with positivity. So yeah. if you are in a community of people who are positive, they are like-minded, they're going for the same things as you, that is a great place to be. If right. you are um, in a Facebook group where people are just mean to each other, nasty to each other, uh, negative, like belittling, get right. out of there. Or complaining all Naysayers, the time. Naysayers, always like, oh my gosh, this happened. Oh my gosh, this happened. Oh my gosh, I got this client. Like right. we're going to have situations, right? I'm not saying it's always going to be all beautiful, but if you're finding yourself when you go into those groups and you're, you're fe you feel like you're getting drained by trying to help other people stay positive, like you can't always remain in those atmospheres and expect positive results to come from being in that atmosphere. So we need to shake off those small thinking shackles, surround ourselves with positive support, supportive network. Surround yourself with positivity. If you're not part of a positive group uh, or a community that's going to cheer right. you to success, then find one. The third thing is to embrace failure as a stepping stone. Fear of failure mm -hmm. keeps us stuck in small thinking patterns. But here's the thing. Sure. We'll never succeed in anything if we don't try. And it's okay right. to step out and fail because you are going to learn. Every time right. you do a consultation and you don't get hired, you're learning. You can you can fine tune things. You can make it better. We can do this on a regular basis. I love the, the term by Marie Forleo who says, you win or you learn. You never yeah. lose. Right. I really, I really like, I think that's really true. You can win or you can learn mm -hmm. because anytime you have a failure, it's an opportunity to learn. Something that I personally do when I'm in a funk. Anybody ever been in a <clears throat> funk before? You're like, okay, I'm just not motivated. I am discouraged. I feel discouraged. I feel like 
there's no life in this. Like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, all the things that us ladies do. Yeah. It's a normal feeling for everyone. So one of those tips is to expose yourself to bigger things. Bigger things than you normally would do. I agree with that. More yeah. luxury things than you would normally. Like going to that restaurant, like normally you save it only for really special occasions. Like go there and experience it. And right. like look around you at the other people that are going there like it's no big deal, right? What You, you have to be able to expose yourself to these things so that you can see that there. But wait, there's more, right? There's more. There's more for you. Again, uh, always defining what it is that you want. Right. Right. So if you want success with freedom, you have to define what is success right. look like to you. What does it look like to you? It's not what the world says success is. What does the success look like to you? And what does freedom look like to right. you? Because we're all different. So we need to be able to define what it is. But they want. need to keep their horizons opening yeah. so that they don't limit themselves. Yes. Yes.